In module four of New Testament survey, we're looking at the fourth gospel of the New Testament, or the gospel of John. Particularly in this lecture, I want to look at John's theology of love and how that theology of love informs John's idea of a community or a communion of love in which the disciples of Jesus share in the life of God. I've titled the lecture, The Beloved Community, a phrase that was popularized by Martin Luther King Jr. during his lifetime as a way of describing a community of justice rooted in love, in which all persons were embraced and no persons were discriminated against. What's often forgotten about Martin Luther King Jr.'s use of this phrase, the beloved community, is the way in which his idea of the beloved community was informed by his reading of the New Testament and particularly his study of the gospel of God, of John, and John's theology of love. To say that John has a theology of love is simply to say that for John, God is love. In John's gospel and throughout his writing, this is the most fundamental thing that we could say about God. To say God is love is to say that God is fundamentally who God is in the relationship that God establishes with humanity and the world through the life of God's Son, Jesus Christ. John thus begins his gospel not with stories of Jesus' birth or of his miracles or his uh, announcement of the kingdom, but rather with the proclamation of the reality that in Jesus Christ, the eternal word of God, God's own self, has taken on human flesh. Another way to say this is to say that Jesus embodies God. Jesus is the embodiment of God's love. And he is the embodiment of God's love by the way in which he embodies a certain set of relationships. This is why Jesus is always, in John's gospel, being shown as being in relationship with others. Jesus is shown as being in relationship to the Father, as God's Son. Jesus is shown as being in a special relationship to his disciples through the Holy Spirit. And he's shown as being in a relationship to the world through the community that is the church. A reading of John's gospel thus suggests that there are three fundamental aspects of the relationship of love that God is as embodied in Jesus. The first point is that God is love in God's self. Jesus, for John, is the Son of God, who is in a relationship with the Father from all eternity, as the Word of God. This relationship is displayed in the Gospel of John as a relationship of obedience. And so Jesus is revealed to be truly God, the Son of God, in the way that he is obedient to the Father. So John says, what has Jesus say? Whatever the Father does... The Son does likewise. And he has Jesus also say, I seek to do not my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. The words that I say to you, Jesus says, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. And also Jesus can be found saying, the Father and I are one, but also that the Father is greater than I. For Jesus to say that the Father and I are one, and that the Father is greater than I, is for him to say both that he belongs to the mystery of God, but that the mystery of God is also greater than what can simply be seen in the actions of the one human being, Jesus. So God is in God's self love. But this relationship of love that God is, is rooted in the fact that Jesus is obedient to the Father by loving humanity. And so the relationship that is God's love is the relationship of God's love for humanity in Jesus. A love which loves with reckless abandon. John's Jesus is 
you could say, loves imaginatively. That is, he loves in a way that manifests the very will, that manifests the very mystery and strangeness of God's reign on earth. So Jesus goes around touching ritually unclean people, but these unclean people do not pollute him, but rather he cures them. Jesus spends his time with the poor and despised of society, but then he sits down to dinner and calls for the conversion of the wealthy and corrupt tax collectors in society. A good example of the way in which Jesus loves imaginatively is in the famous story of Jesus in John chapter 8, where he encounters the woman who is caught in adultery and about to be stoned to death. How is Jesus to respond to this? What could he do? Should he argue her innocence? No. Clearly, in a literal sense, she is guilty of adultery. Should he try to fight off her attackers who are trying to stone her? Clearly, he is outnumbered. This is not the way in which God's Son operates. So what does Jesus do? John has Jesus say this very cryptic, famous statement. Let anyone who is among you that is without sin be the first one to throw a stone at her. This is loving imaginatively, because it says that Jesus loves in a way that the structures of this world as we know it cannot themselves imagine or contain. And this eventually is what gets Jesus killed. Jesus loves, literally in John's gospel, to the point of death. So the cross is the ultimate sign of Jesus' obedience to the Father in John. Jesus is so obedient to the will of the Father to love this world that that this obedience takes him to his death. So God is love in God's self. God embodies that love through obedience to the Father in a reckless abandonment of love for humanity in the Son of Jesus. And then finally, thirdly, God loves us in Jesus in such a way as to make it possible for us to love one another with the same reckless abandon. This is really the whole point of the latter chapters of John, chapters 14 through 17, especially John chapter 15. There, Jesus speaks of the Holy Spirit from the Greek word paraclete or parakletos, which means advocate, or helper. This Holy Spirit that Jesus is to send is the one who makes human beings participate in the love shared between the Son and the Father in Jesus Christ. So Christ's obedience to the Father begins a process by which all of humanity is transformed by the Holy Spirit in such a way as to love in the way of Jesus Christ. So to be obedient to God is to be obedient to Christ's commandment to love as he loved. In fact, we come to know who Christ is and come to know who God is for the Gospel of John by loving one another in the way that Christ has loved us. Look especially here at John 17 verses 20 through 25. The short paraphrase of that is this, love for one another is the means by which we come to participate in the life of love that God is. This is what the word community, or the Greek word communion from the word koinonia in the Greek New Testament, means. It means simply to share life together. To love in the way of Jesus Christ and to love in this way is to live according to the imagination of God's reign as embodied in Jesus and to always be living and acting in such a way as to provide a vision for sharing life together that this world itself cannot conceive, cannot formulate, cannot control or contain.
So if we return to where we began, we might say this, if Martin Luther King Jr.'s vision of that beloved community that he talked about is going to be realized for us today, it will look a lot like the communion of love that we see talked about in John's Gospel as he imagine it, imagines it for Jesus and his disciples. What that means concretely for how we live and work in this world today is a question that we ourselves will have to engage in as we study the Gospel of John together this week.